Good morning. Welcome to the Friday show. I'm Jeanette with Forty Kennels. And today we're going to talk about car exposure for puppies. Unfortunately, we have a lot of dogs and puppies that are fearful of the car. And um, many times, especially if you, if you bought your puppy and then we didn't do the exposure correct or you were well-intentioned but just did something wrong thinking you were doing the right thing, right? We talk a lot about that. We treat puppies like they're human. We use our human instincts um, to try to fix things and many times make it worse. So today we're going to talk about to keep um, our puppies feeling safe and happy in a car. Here's some considerations, some help to make sure that your puppy is well adjusted to the car. Because at the end of the day, dogs have to be able to go into the go into a car. And if we have unrealistic fear or anxiety in the car, it's really unfair to our dog. So we're gonna talk about some of the things to do um, to remember, to keep in mind, and I know I talk to my clients a lot, I'm like, the first year of puppyhood, you have to be a lot in a trainer sort of mind um, the thought, the ideology that I'm setting my puppy up for success, they don't necessarily understand um, all the human things like cars and houses and appliances. And we're asking them to integrate into our lives with our modern day technologies, but we aren't spending the time, the effort, the energy to make sure they understand and feel safe around these things. We don't spend the time to train to a leash and teach respect and a, bond, a healthy bond through the leash. We clip the leash on and take them out for a walk as soon as they're, they, they're fully vaccinated. And we expect, we assume they know what to do. That's unfair. So I know I talk to my clients before they take their puppies home and I'm like, look, the first year, a lot of these things you have to think about, this is the first time or this within the first year, I'm training through expectation. I'm setting my puppy up to succeed and be happy, fulfilled, neutral, balanced with all of these things in their life that they will encounter. So if you like to go boat riding, you're going to do boat exposure. All dogs should have car exposure. If you ride with them on the side by side, guess what you're gonna be doing with them as a puppy? And you have to be neutral about it. So we're gonna talk about that. A car should be considered yet another safe space in a dog's life. But we can't assume they'll automatically feel safe in the car. Some of that is because initially puppies go to the vet and the groomer and that's it. So they start to have a negative association with the car. Some of it's you have that one time you brake too quickly, you turn too quickly, and they're physically moved by that and it's uncomfortable by that. Of course, they're going to have a negative association. So here are a few tips and tricks for your puppies. I'm not talking about if you got an established dog that already has a fear. Um, I'm talking about brand new puppies. So we wanna make it short and fun. We wanna vary the length of time and destination or non-destination in the car. So sometimes you're not actually getting out of the car. So maybe you just, and, and again, you have to think, I'm going to go on a ride to train and work with my puppy. I'm gonna reassure them, I'm gonna give them the yes command, I'm gonna give them treats. I'm gonna make the car a really fun place. This is the only time they get a bully stick. Maybe I go get a raw bone, load them up, and they get to chew on a raw bone while I drive in circles around the block. Okay, are we doing this? Are we giving our puppies the opportunity to, to realize the car can be safe and fun? So sometimes you may not be going anywhere. You need to spend the time to actually desensitize and show them and teach them, load up in a car. This could be a longer drive. It could be a shorter drive. We may have a destination to get out. We may not. Again, too often in the first 16 weeks of a puppy's life, the only time they're in the car is to go to the vet, which is not the best experience, right? And then to the groomer usually not their most favorite place. So they start to associate the car as this thing that takes them to something negative. So keep that in mind that the car is positive. Hey, go sit out there and hand feed. Hey, go out there and do the sit on the dog exercise. 
Go sit out there and read your book in the car and hang out in the car for a while. Let them chew on something really good. Sometimes drive, sometimes don't. Have the car, you know, just sitting, have the car moving. So switch up and, and keep things really flexible so you continue to have a very adaptable dog. Okay, so we talked about high value bones and treats. If you have to, sometimes keep. I, look, when we're raising a puppy, we'll be like, hey, where have we not fed this puppy? We fed him in the kennel, out of the kennel, next to other dogs, by the cat. How about the car? Have we fed him dinner? I know it seems so crazy, but it's really important um, to keep this positive and fun. Yes, Cammie writes, the pup cup runs. Yes, to take him to take, take him to Starbucks and get the pup cup. Just be careful if they have a sensitive stomach, but it can always be positive to make sure you're doing positive stops or going on a hike or going to a river and, and lots of good exercise forward movement and exercise is really powerful. So how often are you getting in the car and going to do something to benefit the dog? I'm not a fan of dog parks, so I'm not saying to take your puppy to a dog park and this is why. And, and, I'll, and I'll give my exception to that. But you can't, once you let your dog off the leash and you put him in the fence with other dogs, you no longer can protect your dog. And it is your duty as their owner to protect them. Um, and so if they do get attacked or there is a negative experience, or if your dog is the bully and bullying another dog, you no longer are able to correct that, to monitor that, to guide emotional responses because they are off leash out every it's out of your control and so I am and not only that there's in Vegas specifically but other dog parks there's lice there's mites there's ticks there's fleas there's giardia there's roundworms there's hookworms anywhere where there's other dogs poop they can pick up stuff from their poop and they can pick up something physically from another dog I'm kind of a germaphobe no thank you very much I don't need my dogs around a bunch of other people's dogs I will say there have been a lot of um, clients that have found a dog park where they go at the same time with the same dogs with the same people and and it's all very safe and controlled and I think that's fantastic because it's more of a um, controlled play date where everybody knows everybody's dogs all the dogs know each other <laughs> it's a safe space and if a new dog comes people like peace out or out play dates over like at the end of the day it's just the reality so um, that's my my deal on dog parks. But are you taking your puppy to do fun exercise activities, draining their energy, getting back in the car where it is, you know, now, now they're nice and tired. They had a positive experience. You've got your music on. You feel good. There needs to be that vibe too. It can't always be every time you get in the car, you're anxious too because of traffic. You're running late. You have things to do. You've got errands to run and you're feeling that and your starts and stops are heavy. Like, let's just be honest, right? You're in traffic and the dog's in, in the car like, what the heck? Like they feel you, they feel physically the, the way the car is. So really be cognizant of that, especially with our younger puppies. If that's the case, if that's the kind of errands it's going to be, again, this is not the time the puppy should go. Initially, when you go walk um, a dog, you're doing training. It's not to go get the, the mail. Okay, so, you know, making sure that it's fun and positive, super important. Okay, sit and hang out in the car if needed. If you start to realize there's some anxiety or fear, it's really, really important you do not exit the car until the dog is in a calm state of mind. Then they learn that release of the release of pressure being in the car happens when they relax, when they're calm, and that's like, yes, you reward the calm state of mind, then you exit the vehicle, okay? So if if you have to, you may, and, and I would just do it initially, like I said, just because we're, we're wanting adaptable, flexible dogs, so sometimes the car's moving, sometimes it's not, sometimes we'll go sit out there, catch up on social media, hey, let's go, go chew on this bone in the car, rather than, you know, at my feet at the desk. Okay, um, keep your emotions neutral. Do not reward anxiety and fear. So if, again, if you're feeling anxious, like I just talked about, if your errands are kind of, and I know that I'm a mom, so I'm just speaking from experience. I know I hate running errands and I hate when there's a lot of traffic. So I would never take a new puppy with me to run errands. I'd be very cognizant of this is not the time 
um, to take a puppy on errands. The only time they're in a car is when it's controlled. It's when I'm doing the training. It's when I know where we're going. I've got my emotions in check. The car is a very tranquil, um, safe space, if that makes sense. Okay, my next slide. Now, here's a common question. <laughs> are they car sick or are we dealing with fear or anxiety? So here's a few things, because dogs can get car sick. So here's a few things I suggest trying to see so you can determine, are we, are we dealing with motion sickness or is this actually fear and anxiety? I look at, they can salivate with both, with fear and our motion sickness. Typically, they vomit only if it's motion sickness. So if it's just salivating, I tend to then think that it's anxiety, fear. If it's both, typically car sickness. But you know how you can find out real quick? Go get in the car and don't move. And if they start salivating and they vomit, guess what? Not motion sickness, the car was not moving. It's an aversion to the car, okay? If they are dealing with car sickness, if you've ruled that out, they literally get motion sick like me. Here's some things I found that really, really help. Any kennel facing forward, so they can't be spinning around, they can't be moving around too much. It's just like human motion sickness. Face them forward in a kennel, buckle them in. I put air conditioner, so there's moving air right on them. And I put them in the back seat in between the driver and the passenger so they can see straight. I also then will give them a, if you can admit like Trader Joe's, the organic ginger cookies, so there's not that much sugar in them. Um, give them a, like 30 minutes before a car ride, give them a ginger cookie. I typically find if I, if I put these protocols in place, their motion sickness gets a lot better. So lots of air, forward facing in a kennel um, where they feel safe already, buckle them in. So there's not a lot of moving around and swiveling and checking and looking. They're, they're kind of just stuck facing forward with lots of air moving on them and they've got a little bit of ginger in their stomach. The other thing is too, I wouldn't travel with them with an empty stomach and I wouldn't feed them a bunch right before we go. So monitor the feeding as well before they have to go in the car. But you, can, you truly can help them with their motion sickness just like humans. There's also medication as well. So if you're traveling longer distance with them, you can talk to your veterinarian about medication to help them. Okay. Going back to fear. So if you now do have a puppy that exhibits some anxiousness or fear in the car, but the whole goal was to set up the exposure like we just talked about so that you don't get to this place. But if you do, here are also some suggestions. First of all, don't hold your puppy in the car. What happens is if they are exhibiting a little bit of unsureness or fear or anxiety or the, the brakes hit or you're anxious or you're agitated, guess what? All of that, they're like little sponges. You're just, they're soaking that in and now the car is a negative association. The other thing we typically do because we're human and it's normal but we have to remember we're dealing with the canine brain. If they're whining, what do we do? We sit and we pet them. Sometimes not even realizing it. We sit and we pet them. But in a dog's brain, we're literally rewarding, reinforcing, yes, you should be fearful. Yes, you should be anxious. Yes, you should not want to be in this car. That's not what we think we're saying, but that's exactly what you're telling a canine brain. So I am big on dogs should be in the back seat. They should not be in the front with you. Again, it's your dog. If you want a riding passenger and that's the way it's set up, that's great. But my number one thing is like, do not hold a puppy in the car. Um, of course, safety is an issue. There are seat belts or put them in a kennel and you can buckle in the kennel. Please know if you don't have your dog contained and there is a car wreck, typically if the dog does live through the car accident, the fear, the, the fight or flight mode of being in the accident sets them to take off. Um, and unfortunately, some dogs have run back into traffic and been hit. There have been many cases where the dog was never recovered or found. And then, of course, there's been some happy endings where the dog was recovered and found later on. So always make sure they have their proper ID. But uh, look into safety measures, buckling them in or putting them in a kennel. Do not pet or verbally reward a pup working through anxiety or fear. 
reassure you can reassure them with you're fine and you have to believe it you have to feel it you have to be giving off those vibes like look there's nothing wrong with this car you're fine um but don't be like it's okay i know you're scared i'm so sorry if you're if that you're if you're speaking that way and you're feeling that way, you're again telling the canine brain, you're telling this moldable, pliable puppy that they should absolutely fear or have anxiety in the car. So be really cognizant of that as well, that you're just very matter of fact, you're fine. Um, a, a story about Hannah, when I got her, I got her, she was, she was four months old. So we were really past the critical first 16 weeks with her. And um, I've shared this story with many of you, but she, came from a puppy mill and um I kind of got suckered into buying her <laughs> buying her I was one of those I was like I wanted a dog for my classroom but she kind of she came into my life and then the lady that rescued her essentially the the puppy mill was sending entire litters to Las Vegas and a, a neutral breeder I guess I would say was selling the litters to the public a lady went to buy a schnauzer from the breeder but then there was this golden doodle litter there. All the puppies had sold, but Hannah was outside in a kennel in um, the Las Vegas heat. Her name was Banjo. And she went there to get her schnauzer, felt bad for this, this dog in this kennel, and bought her. Um, I came across her looking for a dog for my classroom. When I called her, it was a clear no that this dog could not work in the classroom. Um, she had no life skills. She'd been in a cage literally her whole life. Um, had never been on stairs, didn't know how to walk through a doorway, terrified of her own shadow, just kind of a mess. Um, and I, you know, thanked her for her time and told her I really needed a dog for the classroom. <laughs> and I've been working so hard to try to find a dog like that. Fast forward three weeks later, she calls me again and she's like, will you please just come and meet her? I've made a lot of progress. And so I, I knew, I knew darn well going to see her that she would not be in my classroom dog. Um, but I did feel compelled to go and meet her. So I buckled in Matthew and Jen into their car seats and off I went to meet her in Las Vegas. And I walked into the house. The dog was nowhere to be seen. I sat on the middle of the floor and out comes little Hannah Banana at like four months old, crawled into my lap. And of course the rest was history. But what I learned, this dog has taught me so much too about the power of trust, um, the power of, um, empowering your dog it she was terrified of everything she didn't have the life skills she never had anybody believe in her she hadn't been exposed to anything um, and she was already four months old so the, the clock was ticking this is where I, I really had learned about tether training I just instinctively was like this dog's clipped to me she doesn't have any other option but to know that everything will be fine and she'll experience the world through my strength through the leash so the leash became an incredibly powerful tool for us. But as you can imagine, Hannah was terrified of cars. <laughs> and so um, I just knew I didn't want her for the rest of her life to fear a car. I will tell you now at 11 and a half, she has no problem loading. There's no anxiety or fear. She still to this day will not sleep in the car unless it's a really long car ride. Um, but she is relaxed. So, I mean, in the scheme of things, that's huge. But what I ended up doing with her was I didn't give her the option. I took her on a um, road trip to Montana to see my family. And so Hannah had to learn the car was a safe space. Um, she learned to relax in the car. It, she was completely desensitized um, in a safe, empowering way through... through um, me taking her on a road trip. So it was just kind of desensitizing. Anyway, that's my, one of, one of my many stories about helping cars or dogs through, um, car anxiety or fear. Okay. So just reassuring with your fine. And then I ex explained it as well. Wait until the puppy's in a calm state of mind before exiting the, the vehicle. If there is some anxiety, if there is some fear and you quick, like, Oh my gosh, let's just get this dog out of here. And you're feeling that and you're opening the door quickly and you're getting them out. You've literally just reinforced, holy crap, the building's on fire, get out. Essentially, to a dog in the fight or flight mind, you are reinforcing, oh, you're experiencing this fear, let's hurry up and get you out. And so you've just reinforced, you absolutely should be fearful and bail out of this car. So be very aware of 
getting cars in and out. We love to practice, you know, we know meeting their needs and order rules, boundaries and limitations is number one. So we don't ever let any of our dogs exit the car until they're given permission. We give them the wait command, we'll open the door. Plus it's a huge safety issue if you're in a parking lot. Um, that they know they're never allowed to bolt out of a car. We want them to stay focused, have self-control, know that uh, we're in control. They have nothing to fear. Please wait. Let me get your leash. Let me get my purse. Let me do whatever I need to do. And then on command, let's go load out of the car. The same thing loading into the car. They're not allowed to load into the car until we give the load command. Again, I don't want to start with with any kind of anxiety or excitement, same thing with putting a leash on a dog. If there's a lot of excitement building, oh my gosh, we get to go to the car, we get to go to the car, because it could be the opposite, like over excitement about the car and they're trying to jump into everybody's car because they love to go bye-bye. Um, we also ask for self-control and focus. You do not load the car until you're given the command load. You will do so in the back seat. You'll be buckled in or however, whatever your safety restraints are, um, and then rewarded. So. There is my take on exposing new puppies to a car. It's something we just need to be aware about. It's something that needs to be managed like teaching everything in a puppy's life. And, it, and depending on your life as well, if you have a pool, you need to do pool exposure. If you have a side-by-side, -side, you need to do side-by-side -side exposure. If you have a boat, if you RV, um, a truck versus a car like puppies are very situational so getting them used to your lifestyle integrating them into your lifestyle in an empowering way is incredibly important for their lifelong skills of being happy and neutral and balanced so they're not having meltdowns in the car or having a lot of fear or anxiety in their car so there you have it keep it in mind when you have a brand new puppy um, to make cars fun to make a part of your training schedule it shouldn't just be done as a as an afterthought keep those important things in mind so that the car is nothing but positive and safe and just a part of their everyday life with you I'm Jeanette with 4E Kennels. We're only healing hearts and changing lives through the power of a dog, but we are changing breeding from bad to badass. And I am taking a lot of breeders with me on this journey to empower puppies, empower breeders, and empower owners because at the end of the day, our dogs win and they truly deserve more. Have a great weekend. Bye.